Hello, 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 welcome. We're going to be talking about automation on large printers today and celebrating the start of the CR10 beta program, which we already have a bunch of people signed up for waiting for their beta kits. This is the largest printer that we've automated so far. I'm Mateo Pekic. I'm one of the co-founders of 3DQ. I did all the you know, initial tinkering on 3D printer automation years ago. And of course, I'm joined by Steven. Yes, I'm the Quinley product lead. So I do all things Quinley, uh, designing parts, printing them, getting them shipped out. Our special guest this week, the CR10. Whoa, wow. look at that. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty familiar form factor, tilted at an angle, got a vapor bed on the front, and it's got some internal ramps that prevent your parts from getting trapped. I'm going to show Let's that take one out. Yeah, this is actually our largest printed part to date. These are huge. They take up a full, like, Ender 3 build height. So they're actually printed, like, vertically here. And they're just printed like that on a vapor bed. They're definitely, like, a weird shape for 3D printing since they're so tall and skinny, but they do end up printing out quite well. Check out those layers. Having a print farm of 20 something enders is nice but now that we have this larger printer it'll let us start to kind of expand our efficiency just by consolidating parts i'll hand it off to you steven actually because you're sure let's do some slicing you're better at slicing than i am yeah so today i think we'll be doing a really big benchy just to do one i think it's in our downloads folder that's where all stls belong. <laughs> <laughs> that's the typical location all right we got it small benchy here how big do we want to do it um well why don't we just fill up the build volume keep it diagonal maybe so the cure profile has like default settings with like you know 0.4 nozzle 0.2 layers um actually should we do should we do bets on how how long this print will take at default quality i'm gonna go with my initial guess was three days i'm just gonna go with my gut i think i think it's probably an underestimate but I, I think it will be four and a half days. Four and a half? Oh, what? Okay. Interesting. Two okay. days, 15, 14 and a half hours. Good job, Steven. See, that's, that's the intuition right there. Let's just see how much of a difference just the nozzle itself makes. Okay. Okay. How long do we have here? One day. <laughs> One so day and We've already hours. cut a, a day and 10 hours off just by changing the nozzle width and, and the layer height slightly making that gradual infill step height a bit more because um, you need that higher density infill to be solid enough to support the layers above it. And when you're printing really fast, you know, those are going to droop or they're not going to connect if you just do one layer of high density infill. I think just two millimeters two would be reasonable. Millimeters, yeah. So we'll see how much that reduced the print time. So it was a day and five hours and change. We'll see how it does. So it saved four hours, but on a day, that's, you know, that's a decent amount. Yeah. 15%, something like that. Yeah. But it reduces your material usage quite a lot. As True. Well. So yeah. if it's not critical that you have 20% density infill everywhere, this is a really good way of saving material. But what we can see here, I mean, immediately is the infill is not what's taking up the bulk of the time in the print. It's our perimeters. Travel is actually 10% of our print time and retraction is another 9%. So actually together they make up 20% of the print time. So if you can design your parts to be in vase mode, maybe show the ramp again. Yeah, this guy's in vase mode. They're like less than two hours, I think. Yeah, these guys are pretty giant prints, but they only take two hours. And it's simply because they're designed to be printed in vase mode. Your print speed doesn't matter as much if you're at your printer 24 seven, but when automation comes into play, it becomes a huge factor in your output because Quinley's running your printer 24 seven. So, you know, you're no longer losing time to prints finishing fast and then sitting there waiting for you to wake up in the morning to remove them. Because with Quinley, they just get removed right away and it moves on to the next one. So it, it actually makes a massive difference. Did a thousand hours of printing um, and we were printing these face shields for COVID. 
and the initial slice time for the face shield was 75 minutes. And we remodeled the part. It to be like layer, line width multiples. Yeah. So there wasn't any weird zigzag shuffling by In the printer. Bills. So that took it from 75 minutes to 35 minutes. And over the thousand hours, we printed uh, something like 920 parts. If we didn't do that slicing and model optimization, you know, we would have gotten like yeah, 400. less than half the parts in the same period of time. And if you're selling these, you know, that's less than half the revenue from your printers just because you didn't spend an hour or two extra making sure that your part is sliced for speed. So speed mm -hmm. becomes a very, very critical component with automated printing. Keep the outer perimeter really slow, but oh. make everything inside much faster. So check out the new time. We didn't show the new time, so we dropped another three hours right, let by me, changing the speeds. Let me just revert it. So we have 50 millimeters per second infill, 25 millimeters per second walls. So that goes from a day and two hours to we had 60 infill, and then only the inner wall was increased to 50. Yep. The outer wall stays the same speed, so the outer surface of the print is going to stay the same quality. And here you'll see. So it drops it by three hours. So another three hours have been dropped. And you can expect a very, very similar level of quality. If not, like, identical. Yeah. Now, there are some cases where if you go overboard on your inner wall speed, it will affect the outer wall as well. So... That's not generally something you can crank up to an insane amount. Yep. That being said, things like infill are a bit of a different story. In some of my parts, I've, I've put the infill, you know, up to 80 or 90 millimeters per second, especially if they take, if it takes up a lot of time. Right now, it's only taking up 20% of the print time. So I don't think I would push it any faster than this. So do you want to take it one step further? So another thing you can do is increase the line width bigger than the nozzle. For some things like top surfaces, for example, you can get larger line widths and still get the same quality. On the top surfaces, there are going to be fewer passes. So you can see the density, like the back and forth is much lower. So that saves a whole bunch of time. What you can then do, if you want to preserve the top surface quality, there's a setting called top surface skin layers right at the top. Set that to one. But then we have to set this line width. So I actually do 0 0.6 for this. With a 0.8 nozzle? Yeah, it actually oh. kind of irons the surface. Right. So this is like secret ironing. It's not as good as ironing, but it basically just ironing. So it doesn't go over the same area twice. It just does it once. But it, it kind of the nozzle squishes. Overlaps the previous line. We've got a much better top surface quality, but our print time has not changed. It's still within between 21 and 22 hours. Yeah. Why not? Okay. How good can Steven level a bet on his first try? How's that? It's pretty good. Pretty good. It's looking pretty awesome. Yeah. If you want to continue the discussion, join us on Discord. Um, we'll be putting the 3MF there. Make sure to leave a like on the video uh, because it, it really, really helps get the word out. Um, and I think there's a lot of useful information in here and, and in chat for people to learn how to better optimize their 3D printers and to learn about 3D printer automation. Oh, cool. Okay, so John's saying that's how he set up his new UI. He set up a folder for each different color, which is a very smart way of doing it. Because then you that's don't good. have to worry about color-specific cheat code. Yeah. Yeah, and that's good. You can filter it so you don't have all your other colors clogging up your view. Yeah. That's a nice idea. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. Yeah. And you can continue any conversations on Discord. And if you still want to get into the beta for the CR10 Twin Leap, you can do that through our website by signing up to the beta program. If you've got a Sidewinder, we'll set you up with the beta program. Or if you see any other printers on there that are in beta and you want to try them out, shoot us an email, sign up for the beta program on our shop page. Smack that like button. That's a critical step. Yep. Thank you, Kevin. Um, and yeah, thanks for thanks for joining us. We'll see you all next time. Bye, guys. Bye.